Welcome everyone to Let's Play World of Waves as Italy, episode number 21. I am going to be dubbing over a video which was recorded with audio issues, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to be playing this fleet battle from last time. I don't even remember what was going on, but today we will be, for the first time, using Captain's Mode. Woo. So this is, again, post-video, post-recording commentary. Um, so I'll be kind of commentating what I see rather than doing the play-by-play -play of what I'm thinking, which is always, I think, a little bit suboptimal. But the good news is we're doing this playthrough, quote-unquote playthrough, at uh, 1.5 speed or 1.25 speed. So things are going to happen a lot faster, as you can see. I'm not this quick at using my mouse in, in general. So very, very, very poor weather. We can see it's, a, it's about 5,000 um, yards visibility at night. It is night. It is practically midnight. Uh, so we don't at least have to worry about, um, well, I mean, we're, we're, the only thing we have to worry about is getting our torpedoes off. And that's part of the advantage of captain's mode is you are able to tell your ships to launch torpedoes directly. I see we're getting our speeds up. So I'm leaving my main speed, main fleet battleships at cruise speed, but I have my cruisers moving in the front to scout. I'm going to have our ship right on top of us right away. So it looks like we're going to adjust, <clears throat> move our dreadnoughts kind of on an intercept course, and this is amazing. So I no noticed I didn't do anything, but the Prospero has already launched its uh, two, both of its port side torpedoes. And I think that this is due to being in captain's mode. I know I commentated a lot about this in the game, like, well, this must be captain's mode al already paying dividends for us. And by some even better fortune, not only do we launch, we actually get a hit. So I'm still not sure whether this is an armored cruiser or a light cruiser. And the, the fact that it disappeared from visibility for a moment kind of makes me suspect it might be a light cruiser. But anyways, with the fact that we're actually launching torpedoes, ooh, and just missed with that other one too. Um, oh, and yet and we're launching another torpedo. This is amazing. Like the captain's mode, what, what have we been doing? Why have we not been using captain's mode our entire time? So anyways, the full length of the recording of this video was supposed to be 33 minutes. I suppose it's going to be something like 25 or whatever. I don't know if this is 1.25 or 1.5 times speed up, but anyway. So let's see what else we have. Um, oh, I'm trying to figure out that's the Il Leone de Venezia. I couldn't really see the name, so I had to zoom in. But we're going to pull our light cruiser back. I don't know why I would want to do that. I think we want to, oh, we want to avoid torpedoes. Right, so we, we've already hit this with a torpedo. If it is a light cruiser itself, we're at risk of getting hit by a torpedo. So let's pull off and just let her sink until hopefully we can confirm identity. And the good news with captain's mode is I don't have to worry at all, and this is really amazing. I don't have to worry at all about um, ships going outside of visual range and going to AI control. Captain's mode allows you to control every fleet at any moment, regardless of their distance from your flagship. So <clears throat> I'm just going to choose to send um, the Ilione division, battle division, down to take care of this ship even though I still don't know whether um, it's a light cruiser or not. And if it's a light cruiser, it's probably going to be sunk. But if it's an armored cruiser, we want to make sure it's actually fully taken care of. And we'll start landing some more hits. You might even think that might be enough as it is. Like, it's already going pretty slow. Um, the torpedo obviously has been packed. And then, look, I missed what was going on up here. So we're going to adjust for... We probably went, like, two minutes into this detection of enemy that could be the big ships those two unidentified ones or even the third one swinging down the ones all heading east the ones going west i'm pretty sure are either light cruisers or destroyers those are i'm sure the escorts we still haven't uh identified what that ship is and now we have battle cruisers being reported here yeah so that's going to be bad news for the cagliari but we can try to do the fire torpedoes thing now i don't know how this exactly works and we can see i struggled with it here i thought that there used to be this whole um, display which you brought up and it said like are you in range or not I don't remember how it works anymore like I thought it showed you if you were like incapable capable of launching or not maybe it's for surface mounted torpedoes I don't know anyway uh, I can still click the fire torpedoes button which is nice although they don't always launch torpedoes when you press it as we'll see okay so be nice to kind of Allow myself to take a breath every now and then. <laughs> Alright, we're going to keep pursuing north with the Cagliari. And we've actually launched a torpedo. This ship is, I think, not moving. Or, it's moving three knots. 
Now, um, if you see a ship which is moving three knots, supposedly that means it's already sinking. I did not catch that while I was recording this. So probably that armor cruiser is already sinking, but um, we're still going to move in on it. So the Cagliari, this is one where I'd love to get a torpedo off on the battle cruisers. Uh, and that's looking very good. Maybe slightly ahead of it. Yeah, so we can do this. Oh, we don't even have a target anymore. Well, I guess we'll head south of it. And we have a battle cruiser to our south and to our north, so we got to make sure we don't get ourselves killed. We're already one armored cruiser up. Because, yes, we have now identified it as the Song George. These are known to be pretty unsinkable. That's what I was saying about this time, which is why I want to continue to attack them. But, I mean, in this case, I think in hindsight it was already sinking by this point. Anyway, we don't want to get our light cruiser killed because, look, I mean, we're already sinking an armored cruiser, which gives us a massive points bonus in terms of the strategic uh, map as far as, like, the blockade points goes. Okay, this is heavy damage. is down to five knots. We've already disabled the rear turret. Definitely doesn't look good for the Sunk George. And when you right-click and you see three knots, I believe that's an indication that they are sinking. I believe so. Just uh, food for thought in, in case you are also a player of Rule the Waves. I think that I was mentioned recently that you can use that as a guide if ships are sinking. Cagliari is finally launching a torpedo. We're launching it almost to the stern of a battle cruiser, so not a high probability of success on that one. And uh, we're still wading through these destroyers. It'll be a miracle if we avoid being hit by a torpedo. So we better change direction, try to stay off the broadside of those destroyers. Or at least keep maneuvering so that we make ourselves a tough target. I think at this point I'm deciding that we've hit this ship enough. We've even now even destroyed the rear turret. <clears throat> so I'm deciding that that, in addition to having hit it with a torpedo, probably enough to call it an end. And now, Oh, yeah, that's right. I wanted to figure out where it is. Like, where is this ship in relation to the other ships? We don't have a, a sunk ship yet to kind of use as a, um, like a landmark or a sea mark, I suppose, in order to like figure out where that armored cruiser is in relation to a sunk ship, which is a fixed icon on the map. So we're just gonna have to eyeball it, I think. Okay, Cagliari is avoiding torpedoes. This is not good. We do not want one of our light cruisers hit. So um, let's see what happens here. I'm just gonna, Kind of just take a drink and take it. I'm gonna take it easy in this battle. This is, uh, I, man, I got to say that after recording commentary is much more difficult. <laughs> we're about, we're a little bit in trouble here. We don't want to ram a cruiser. That might be a destroyer still. And our armor cruisers are coming up. You can see on the right side of the screen. Okay, so this is an Arethusa. This is a light, light cruiser. That's the four inch gun ones. So we've taken a, a few hits from the battle cruisers, but it looks like our ships are still plowing along. Still avoided torpedoes up to this point, but look at that. That's not a good situation. That origin class is really close. Not a good turn for us. Took several hits from, well, mostly from other ships. Now here I was just checking to see what kind of heavy ships. I was like, okay, well, well let's let the battle cruisers go. Because we can always just wait for the dreadnoughts and the battleships, which can't run away as well. And that's when I remembered, oh, we've already sunk all the Austro-Hungarian um, dreadnoughts and battleships. So the, the, this is the main fleet. This is the fleet battle. It's just battle cruisers, battle cruisers and armored cruisers. But since we haven't, we don't see any other armored cruisers. I guess it's just, ooh, the Etna's avoiding torpedoes. Um, I missed, I think, the destroyer, which is right by the Quartia Reale. I didn't even see it kind of snuck like underneath my under my radar until this point now i realize it's there and we'll take a evasive action but um we're just going to shepherd the arethusa off if we can manage to sink an armor cruiser and a light cruiser without taking any other ship losses we will be in really good shape so that's what we'll go ahead and try to do and leading the arethusa is important harder for those ships to fire a torpedo forward. So we're just about to run into this origin class. The Cagliari has kind of has to watch itself. Although three six inch guns from that range, 
probably were enough to sink it. So, and it wasn't able to launch torpedoes, I guess, which is good. Now, we're just murdering the Arethusa. I do wonder which direction we should go around the Arethusa with a Spilato. Should we try to... Like, I don't want to go broadside to broadside. I don't want to turn too far west, because then I'm opening myself up to, you know, a late torpedo. Um, also, the Origin might be launching torpedoes from north to south. So, okay, yeah, in that turn I figured out that we just got to go west a little bit, and now we'll, we'll nose down. And since I know I'm going to just disengage from this, and just take my armored cruiser and my light cruiser kill, and hey, another dest that destroyer is dead, so destroyer kill too. Um... We're going to be okay with that. So we'll move all the ships south. And I have to say, I haven't mentioned it enough, how impressed I am with um, uh, Captain's Mode. I'm going to send my armor cruisers back just to make sure we confirm this kill on the Arethusa. I don't like these almost sinking ships get aw getting away. And she, at that, po at that point, I don't think I, that's, that pop-up I closed pretty quickly, but I don't think it was at three knots quite yet. Oh, it probably was. So I'm still trying to get the torpedoes to launch. I don't know why. I'm, I must be missing a pop-up, and maybe somebody in the comments will help me out here. Uh, like with an actual dialogue about launching your torpedoes, whether or not you're within a firing arc or whatever. I, I swear, I maybe I'm going crazy, but I thought I've seen it. So we did detect the ship in the south. We did see there it's moving three knots, which I know... It's just kind of confirmation that this... Uh, and the battleship down here, the armored cruiser, so we can see it's moving. So it was a good idea to return, even though it did say three knots originally. I don't know whether or not it was actually sinking. So uh, maybe that whole three knot thing is not always true. Maybe it's like... Oh, but well, we can see it probably was true that that ship was already sinking. We just shot it maybe a couple more times, but... It already sank, and that probably is not because of those last few shots. So that's it. That's the battle. Um, we're going to head back home now. We're just going to get everyone under AI control and return in nice formation. So from my count, it looks like one armored cruiser, one light cruiser, and one destroyer is what we eliminated. And I think we took some light damage to our light cruisers. I mean, we can see the Prospero there has a bit of a, a red in its HP bar. Um, let's see, the Cagliari has a little damage. The Prospero a little bit. But yeah, we'll just sail back home and it's nice. I just set the speed to 14 and everyone caught up. So we'll just parade back in in nice formation. Too bad it's dark outside that people can't see, or now misty, they can't see that uh, the nice formation we arrived at. Even after a battle, we maintained good discipline. So the Austro-Hungarians, I was a little bit worried about them maybe trying to pursue some of my ships, but we see that they also just headed back to port. And there it is, just as expected, armor cruiser, light cruiser, destroyer killed. No losses of our own, just some light damage on all three of the light cruisers. So a really hefty win, and I did point out there, as we saw, the light, the captain's mode does reduce um, your victory points by 20%. Although, honestly, if we're ahead on victory points, which you can see that we are, by, you know, almost, I mean, 50% higher than their victory point count, the victory points don't matter as much as eliminating their ability to do any kind of damage to me in the future, which is, what I'm trying to say is, the victory points don't matter, sinking ships does matter. So if we sink their ships, which we did here, three of them, without losing a ship, then I would prefer the victory point hit, especially because we're already leading. So all we need to do is keep enforcing um, the blockade, which we will do. I do talk about here how the budget is a mess, and it is a total mess. Um, we, I really want to get destroyers. I've mentioned it, actually, I in the actual recording itself, I mentioned it several times how... That fleet battle would have been a lot easier to do if we had destroyers. And I'm sure that people, um, the viewers, you, are probably already thinking that in your head. Or maybe even in a fit of rage, screaming it at the monitor. <laughs> Why no torpedoes? So we caught a raider here with our Etna. I go ahead and accept this, although I am worried immediately about possibly encountering a battlecruiser. Um, the fact that we detect this ship so close within our, it's not at the edge of our vision. That makes me think it's probably a light cruiser. 
because there is a I think a detection mechanic with size. So when I see CL, we just we just gun for it even harder. And uh, the only thing we have to worry about here is getting hit by a torpedo. And okay, I forgot to disengage captain's mode, so we'll suffer a twenty percent victory point mm, shortage or whatever. We'll lose twenty percent victory points here for no reason because we're only controlling one ship, but. Honestly, I might even continue on Captain's Mode. Oh, one of the things I was saying I remember is Captain's Mode seems to be really important. We're blockading, we see. Um, when it comes down to playing as like Italy, Russia, Austro-Hungary, I mean Austria-Hungary, maybe Japan, like the smaller nations where you can't really afford to lose a ship. Although, oddly enough, I mean, we lost as Great Britain. I probably should have done Captain's Mode a few times in that series. Uh, I'm debating here whether or not to accept the destroyer action. One, we do have an advantage because we don't have destroyers, so it's probably our light cruisers against their destroyers, but it's only 100 victory points. I'm debating whether or not, because it's getting a little bit tedious to do all these battles on camera. Um, yeah, oh, I think it's a 1.5 speed up, by the way, because in the video, which I can see the video timer, it's only at, or it's already at 24, and we're only at 16 or so. So I guess this is a, a 1.5 speed up. Well, you guys are getting a, a real treat then. <laughs> so this video will be over in like 23 minutes or something, even though it was a 33 minute video. I, I suppose it'll be 22 minutes exactly. Uh, okay, anyway, um, fleet battle, I debate a lot about accepting this or not, a lot. And I ultimately declined it, but that was a, a real difficult choice because we already have the strategic points, but I don't like declining and giving free victory points. But more importantly, if we could end the war, like if we can destroy the raiding ships, that would be really nice. We actually stole something from the United States. We don't have the UK under high intelligence. Speaking of UK, they sank a AMC and lost a destroyer. It's nice to see. But here, this one, I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and accept. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, they decline it. Oh, I declined it. Okay, never mind. So I went ahead and declined yet another. Oh, that's right. I, I accepted. Ah, yes. This is a very lucky battle. So, spoiler alert. I shouldn't shouldn't say such things. But basically, okay, so we only have one division. Let's go to Admiral's mode so we don't lose the points. Visibility is terrible. Absolutely terrible. So I consider even putting Captain's mode on, but I decide not to. Just because you should be able to launch torpedoes easier, but... Anyways, they're there right away, and what we're immediately going to find out is we are in a swarm of destroyers. You would like to be a light cruiser against a destroyer most of the time, but not when visibility is 1800 or 3000, whatever it is, it's tiny, and you are in a swarm of them. So our ships kind of um, lose formation here, and I think it was actually a good thing if they had stayed formation, probably one of them would have been hit by a torpedo. Um... So I guess I did, yeah, right now in this one, day sighting range went down to a thousand, which I don't understand why it's lower than nighttime. Uh, and we aren't able to take on that destroyer. We were actually being hit by it more than it was, uh, we were hitting it, <clears throat> which is a little confusing. But we survived that. I started to look for the convoy. We want to find it. And we don't have any success with that instead oh this is when i'm actually trying to figure out how much damage should we do well we only hit i guess we hit three we landed three shells maybe i mean with visibility this bad you can't even tell so we'll just keep looking around for the destroyers and because it is a bunch of destroyers they are not too hard to find there they are or are they oh these are actually light cruisers <laughs> now i'm actually happy about this because i think we can take on light cruisers easier than we could take on destroyers without getting pummeled by um, torpedoes. And now I'm thinking, why are there transport ships? Is this two con... This was a convoy... They were hit by a torpedo, but this was a convoy raid, uh, defense. And yet they have convoy ships too, which really confused me, unless perhaps it's possible that those are just um, arm armed merchant cruisers and uh, they have a bunch of them or something. But I, I think I'm, I must have misidentified them or we actually did have a, an enemy convoy right here. Anyways, the Cagliari, for some reason, just does not take very much damage from this, despite its old style. So we launch our ships. The Prospero's kind of sucking wind. Took some heavy damage itself. 
Um, so surprisingly, the Cagliari just does not have issues with syncing with the One Torpedo. And I, I have to say that I was considering trying to make for port here. I was trying to um, move that way, but then I decided, you know what? Flooding is down to zero and it's down to one on the Cagliari. So it would be nice to get to Messina to guarantee it doesn't sink in the uh, two hours that the game simulates beyond the battle's end, just to make sure it doesn't sink then. But I decide, you know what? If we, the only way we can really lose this ship is um, if a bulkhead ruptures. So we just uh, take it easy. Can't believe that's almost the whole episode. So anyways, the uh, issue was caused because I was trying to switch over to a new mic. Oh, and there's the convoy all the way over there. Um, and when you play around with the mics at all, uh, OBS decides to just remove all... Oh, okay, we lost a merchant ship. Well, it didn't even lose it, just heavy damage. Weird. And we did end up sinking one of the destroyers. It was probably that... Um, Vigio, Sigio, whatever... Igio class that we hit with three times with a six-inch gun. Certainly enough... That is possible, um, possibly enough damage. The rating is a little bit annoying. Um, another fleet battle. I This is the one I think I accept. Oh yeah, because I have my light cruisers back. I was just making sure. It, I think they were only gone one month or something because they're back. We go for it. But the Austro-Hungarian Navy declines, so the Austrians aren't interested. I consider that, but then I accept this other fleet battle, and that is the one. So that's going to call this episode to a close. Um, I'm not actually going to do this on camera, but I will probably do this under Captain's Mode. I really like Captain's Mode. Uh, yep, there it is. So anyways, that's it for this episode. Um, stay tuned. We'll try to wrap up this war soon. But until then, thanks for watching and take care.